Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Good morning, Dallas Falls and Keene, and welcome to The Feed. It's Mike and Marty. Today we're here with Patrick Applegate. We're going to be talking about women's self-defense, a course that he teaches here at Greater Rock Fitness. Uh, but first, Marty, with local events. So just a few local events today, so we have plenty of time for Patrick to talk. At the classic movie this Wednesday night is El Dorado. Now, that is truly really a classic. That is a classic. That is John Wayne and Robert Mitchum. So there, <laughs> I would imagine there is some testosterone in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's sponsored by Chroma Technologies. Um, we are just about a month away from Fiddler on the Roof. They've been spending, they spent most of February in crazy rehearsal mode mm -hmm. and building the set. And um, starting on April 5th will be the performances, April, the weekend of April 5th through the 7th, and then the weekend of April 11th through the 13th. So it's only two weekends. Um, I would suggest purchasing your tickets as soon as you can go to the bells falls opera house dot com ticket prices range from forty two dollars from like the front row to a mid twenty seven to thirty for mid seating and then um, seventeen fifty for balcony so there's a price range hopefully to fit everyone's budget um, it's going to be a great production I know David came on with you back in was it January and he touched on it a little bit right. And it's a big, isn't it like a 60-person cast or something? It's a huge cast. Anyway, get your tickets for Fiddler on the Roof, April 5th through the 7th, 11th through the 13th. This Saturday, the 9th, at Next Stage in Putney is another um, Vermont Comedy All-Stars event. It starts at 7.30, and tickets are $12 ahead of time or $15 at the door. And it seems they have the Vermont Comedy All-Stars quite a bit at Next Stage, so they must be popular mm -hmm. and they must be good if they keep coming back. So, I would hope so. I would hope so. <laughs> Maybe they're waiting to get just the right mix. I don't know. No, I'm sure. I'm sure it's. I'm sure. Well, in the winter time, you yeah. know what else? Might as well go see a comedy show. Anyway, I'm done. Anyway, Patrick, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you're offering a self defense course. You want to talk just a little bit about that? We have a clip, but we'll let's just sort of introduce it. Why? What it is? It's a uh, women's self defense class at Greater Rock Jiu Jitsu. Um, it's free to uh, all women every week. You don't have to pay. And we basically try and cover everything we possibly can squeeze into uh, one day a week to help prepare folks for whatever they may encounter. Um, it's, a it's a wide gamut of things. We cover mm -hmm. different things um, every week. Sometimes, you know, we review, but we go over a lot and we try and not only uh, help them feel confident in their self-defense, but it's just a more encompassing all around holistic approach too. Right. So um, let's go to the clip and see what, what this looks like. And then what, what, when you have an idea of what it looks like, we'll talk more about it. scenario where I flipped it and now he just ideally wants to evade or go to the hospital if one of them landed on one of your knees.
So that's why we like to do the up elbow. And typically the up elbow is like, if somebody was aggressing on you very quickly, you could just throw it up and hit them on the way in. But we have to practice it. You never know when we're going to use it. So we go up with the left one, and then sideways, it should be one of our more powerful one. The older one should be definitely one of our more powerful one. Now we step, find the target, and then elbow. Don't just elbow. All right, then we rewind the tape, find the target, elbow down. Interesting class. We can try and make it entertaining and effective <laughs> all in one. Okay. Um, Oops. We've got we an, an echo, echo going here. Uh, there we go. There we go. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it looks. Looks. It was. It was great to, to film, and it was just interesting to watch. And I maybe you could. I was just thinking. I I'm interested i'm pleased we talked a little bit before we started about the age range that you have in there i think it's really good that you have some really younger younger participants i think that's a huge skill set to learn and an empowerment in community building what, what i hope to achieve is have the full gambit of age range and then they all mentor each other in a lot of ways too i, I feel like having that age range and working together and getting along together, having fun, pursuing the same goals, but from different places mm -hmm. and helping each other. I think that's crucial. I love the mentoring aspect of, of having these, these self-defense or, or martial arts classes where it's just a wide range of people and they all work together because everybody has something to contribute with their experience in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would dwell on the, what you were talking about empowering. I think that's really, there, you teach techniques, but you really give people self-confidence and empowerment. My, my goal and my favorite thing to do is to empower people. But from a martial arts perspective, in my opinion, the key is not, it's not really empowering them. It's showing them or teaching them how to empower themselves. Mm -hmm. And the way I try and really get that process started is by allowing them to see within themselves the power they have cap they're capable of, especially if they weren't expecting it. Mm -hmm. So once you know that you're capable of inflicting power that you, you didn't realize you could, now it starts to begin, the confidence starts building, uh, all the personal boundaries you put up, you start taking away and you just become more open-minded. And then, and then approach not only self-defense, but then hopefully life. Yeah. So um, you said that you do change things up every week, but you practice a lot of um, technique. Is it is that the idea of um, building almost an automatic muscle memory so that if you get in a situation where you need to bring those skills out, they almost come out automatically? You're not thinking, oh, my God, what did we do in class a week ago? Is that part of it? Yes. So you never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you try and pick what is most common and, make, and balance that also, well, well, may not be as common, what's the most dangerous scenario you're gonna yeah, face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you don't wanna do all of this stuff and then get in a scenario, man, that was nothing like anything <laughs> I ever practiced. Although it would be beneficial. Uh -huh. We try and really, what I want is for them to see the value. I want the value to be obvious, like yeah, this could happen. And this is a very complicated situation. So the only way you're gonna respond correctly is to practice in it so much that not only is your technique capable physically, but then yes, mentally, you're able to do it without panicking, without freezing up. And it's just a muscle memory reaction and that's the repetition. Um, it's, it's a difficult balance though, because mm -hmm. you, never, you never really know what's happening. Um, so I try and cycle it enough like for this class, it was a lot of pad hitting. We don't always hit the pads, although mm -hmm. um, people enjoy hitting the pads and, it, and it, um, it serves its purpose. But we try and come up, the biggest thing I want is it for it to be real. Mm -hmm. Like you're gonna learn stuff and not only could this really happen, but it's, it's really difficult to deal with, but you could really 
successfully defend yourself in that situation. Mm -hmm. But it has to be real. It can't be fictional or, mm -hmm. or, or hope based. Yeah. It was you were talking about hitting the pants. The other thing was that I was impressed with is it, people started start, started off sort of timid, you know, like. But then they were just whacking away, and uh, it was a great workout because people were working up a sweat. I mean, I, it was I was surprised how how much of a workout it was. It's definitely physically demanding, <laughs> um, and you will get in shape, you know, from hitting the pads and stuff. The the key is is if you just keep doing it, all of a sudden you'll do one that's just more right. It just for whatever reason that one was more right. Mm -hmm. And the key is you know it. Like, you can tell. You can feel the way you hit the pad. The pad holder knows it was right because they can feel it more. So you kind of start in one place, and a lot of it's based upon personal expectations if you've never done it. And that's what I mean. Like, we got to mm -hmm. break down and mm -hmm. remove a lot of those personal expectations and say that you're approaching your self-defense from this perspective, but that perspective, you're not giving yourself much credit and capability. We need to understand that you have to be more confident in what you do and do it like you mean it and the reason is because whether you think you can do it or not the situation dictates mm -hmm. and a lot of these situations the choice your, your voluntary participation in the process has been taken away somebody's forcing yeah, you yeah. to do something and you have to have a response so we try and make that as natural and as easy and as effective as possible and you might only have like a split second second to get that response in before the situation de-escalates or, or, or escalates to a point yeah, where maybe yeah. you don't have the, the well, second. Do you that's, find that's kind of, from a philosophy standpoint, um, that's kind of what I try. I want, I want a reaction that's instant mm -hmm. because we want to give them all the reason in the world to, to either not choose us or to decide that they made the wrong choice. And that now their choice, like you heard in the video, is to evade, to get away. That's mm -hmm. what we want to create. And we have to create that right out of the gate. And we do that by looking to use techniques that are powerful for everyone. Like I, I do teach a lot of elbows. I do teach mm -hmm. a lot of knees because not everybody can punch hard, mm -hmm. but everybody can elbow and knee hard. So if we can have a response to what's happening that involves an elbow and a knee, and like I tell them, even if it doesn't land, just showing the fact that, listen, I'm willing to fight back. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you're going to proceed, I'm going to do everything I can to, to fight back and hurt you in the process. And that is the psychological element where they have to decide, is it worth to keep going? Mm -hmm. And I, I preach that most of the people doing the attacking are opportunists, not necessarily predators. Predators and opportunists. A predator is very dangerous um, because it's almost like an animal. They've made a decision. They've set up the scenario. They're watching the scenario and they're looking to ambush um, their prey. But more likely, it's going to be an opportunist where somebody that had no intention of doing anything sees a perfect opportunity for the perfect crime and then they act on it. Mm -hmm. No, that right there, um, if you can give them a reason not to it's not take, the perfect crime. this is not the perfect <laughs> crime this is not the perfect opportunity mm -hmm. so, and that's going to be in most cases so i think like like um the opportunist yeah. is probably ultimately lazy so they find uh, the perfect it's just opportunity not well thought out and either. then yeah. and then if it's like okay i'm not i want to work that hard yeah i'm done i'm out like you know yeah so, but it doesn't go exactly right. like you thought as easy as you thought and either you got hurt in the process which you weren't expecting or you see that you could potentially have gotten hurt in the process, now your whole mentality changes from attack mode to escape mode. Mm -hmm. And that's better for us as a victim if we can convince the person mm -hmm. that they need to go into escape mode. We've, we're assuming we've lost that choice. You know, if we could just run away, that would be one thing. But mm -hmm. in this scenario, we're assuming we've lost they're that choice. And we're forced in a situation where we have to defend ourselves. The other part then is different because we're the good we're the good person. Mm -hmm. It's not like in defending ourselves, we're gonna chase you three miles down the road until you get your just <laughs> right, coming. Right. You know what I mean? We're just trying to have we're trying to de escalate the yeah. situation. And get away. Our number one priority is self preservation. It's not necessarily to get our revenge mm -hmm. or, or, or to give the person what they truly deserve. First we start with self preservation. 
Can yeah. you talk about the, is there legality involved with how much you? What most people misunderstand what self-defense is, it's kind of like the old middle school or high school um, fight rule, whereas if you touch me, then I can pretty much do whatever I want because I'm defending myself from your aggression because you touched me first. But that's not the case. Uh, if somebody aggresses towards you, legality by state law and things like that is different everywhere, but the spirit of the law is the same. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the law is that you cannot aggress past the point where you have diffused the situation unless there's uh, exigent circumstances like a, a weapon involved mm -hmm. or something like that where it could lead in an instant going mm -hmm. forward to to a more dangerous situation but if somebody just attacks you without a weapon and you're able to take them out so to speak you're not allowed to keep going until mm -hmm. you take them out mm -hmm. forever yeah. you so have to <laughs> stop reasonably and reasonableness is like any random person what what would any random person consider reasonable you know if someone is attacking you and you hit them back and that stops them that's considered reasonable but if they stop and you chase them down that's what i was gonna <laughs> say if you chase them down then it it's probably just not crosses considered over. reasonable yeah. now you know there's always going to be variables mm -hmm. you know if they attacked you with a significant weapon a significant amount of aggression that will always be weighed into it but keep in mind, it has to be reasonable, mm -hmm. and you can't go on the. You don't have a free pass to just go on the mm -hmm. offense. That makes That's sense. That's important to understand. Plus, the more you're trained, the more you're going to have to justify your actions because you're. Mm -hmm. It's going to be considered that you you should know better or be capable enough to defuse mm -hmm. the situation, which isn't necessarily fair. Right. But you, it's just things you have to keep in mind. Anything self defense, it's not a free pass. You're literally allowed to protect yourself from other people's aggression. But that's kind of where the line stops. You can't continue without more uh, exigent circumstances allowing for it. And isn't the mindfulness, isn't that, doesn't that come a little bit with the mindfulness of the practice? Is there a point of mindfulness? It does, but we're talking about a situation where the mind uh, can be lost a little bit because, because the, the brain's the, releasing you, chemicals right, right, and, it's, and it's running off those chemicals and we don't always have the most clarity in those situations. The training is what provides the clarity. That's why we want to train, not only so that the muscle memory's there, but there's a there's a clarity the whole time. That's another thing that I always try and stress in my classes. We want to create chaos in the other person, but we want to remain in a clear space where we're doing clear thinking. Our actions are clearly thought out and done. That's a good, um, that gives That's us a good an analogy. Advantage. We're trying to we're trying to have the advantage. If you're in rocky seas and I'm in a calm sea, I have the advantage in no matter what we're doing. And this is part of the overall philosophy because we have to nullify size and strength differences. We, we take that into consideration as a re reality, and, and that's one of the ways we do it. Interesting. How are we doing on time? I just, because I. Oh, seven minutes. Okay. I wanted to get to the, because one of the things you did at the end of the class, which was totally unexpected for me and totally different, is he sat down and talked to the whole class about the, the idea of supporting each other in situations. And so if you get into a situation and somebody's calling you out, but so one of your, someone else is there that you know, may know that person, they should talk them down. You know, and the whole idea of intervening to support other people. That I, I, I said that terribly, but. Uh. <laughs> um, no, we're, so at the end of every class, I try and give like a speech. In a lot of ways, I'm trying to make it motivational. I want to motivate and, and end on a positive note because everybody just great did great work. But I'm also trying to be realistic and give really good advice. And it's not just. You know, this is a community-based self-defense approach mm -hmm. in our little small community. It's not just the actions these individuals take. If we can build each other up and we see each other as a team, it's like I tell them if, if somebody is bothering you or harassing you or just make you feel uncomfortable and you see me in Shaw's in the bread aisle, just come up to me and say, hey, can I hang with you for a second? If that's all you say, no questions asked, you can hang with me, and if everybody comes by you, then, then you have an ally. Mm -hmm. And what I, I, and I tell them I can't be everywhere, mm -hmm. as ideal as it would be, but we're in a small town. If there's 20 people in the class, you maybe legitimately see one of those people from your class, and we should all look out for each other. We're a team. 
and we should support each other not just in the self-defense but in everything it's, it's it's like a state of mind we should build each other up in every way and especially for the women's self the class i love to see women building each other up across multiple generations across age lines. Mm -hmm. do you have any um mother-daughter teams in there or anything absolutely and mm -hmm. and and the thing i love the best is watching them work and having fun and enjoying that time without you know fussing with each other and stuff like that it, <laughs> it just provides a space where mm -hmm. You can just be whoever you are and enjoy each other's company, mm -hmm. even though what we're working on would be considered, I don't know, like something that would make you anxious mm -hmm. or, or worried or something, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But it's not, it's not. We, we can approach scary things with a sound mind and we can, we can help each other do that by working together, lifting each other up and being a team, whether in mind or whether physically we, we happen to be somewhere and we can look out with each other. I think it goes back to the, the first thought was the empowerment. Empowerment. If, if everyone's empowered, then I don't know, you just you walk differently, you have a different air, you have a, you become less possibly less the person an opportunist looks that's to. A, that's what I preach. Yeah. That's what I preach. And it, it has it has on a an effect on your town so what I call like a socially or culturally where I would like to see it where you you come to certain places and you say that type of behavior is not just not tolerated here mm -hmm. doesn't and like I tell them it's not doesn't mean we're gonna gang go around as a gang and beat everybody <laughs> up that does it but there's this certain yeah. behaviors mm -hmm. that just aren't going to be tolerated and we as a group are going to look out for each other and not allow you to treat each other like that. And if we do that, it just spreads and it spreads. And you, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be physical. It just doesn't happen here right. because we don't tolerate it. Mm -hmm. That's huge. That's huge. It's certain, that's, that's such we can a, change anything like that. Yeah, a different level of um, Across change. multiple age. Middle yeah. school, how people treat each other. Mm -hmm. High school, how people treat each other. And then post high school as adults through different decades, how we treat each other. So how do people um, get a hold of, what's the best way for people to find out about the class? Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> should they just email, should they show up? Should they call the gym? What's, what's the, the best? The best thing is to show up. Okay. Come talk to us, come observe, or come participate. Um, the best thing to do is show up. Um, any Friday you wanna participate, you can show up and you can be in that class. If it would make you feel more comfortable to bring a partner that you know, bring a partner that you know. Otherwise, we'll give you somebody that's going to be a great partner. You'll meet somebody new, and you'll have a new uh, team, new new tribe to work with. But I personally would prefer if everybody came in. If you want to ask questions and call or email, that's great. We'll get back to you. We'll answer any questions you have. But if you could, just please come out. Yeah. Come out and give it a give it a try, or at a minimum, give it a watch mm -hmm. and ask us questions. Does, does someone, is it something that um, you have to commit to every Friday or can it be like it's you can drop in and out? Anytime you want to come on Friday, that class is there for you. Nice. There's no requirements. There's, there's no nothing. It's just Friday, 5 o'clock. Be there. Be there. there. Yeah, be there. <laughs> It's great. Well, thank you again for coming. It's Thanks for great. Having me. Thank you for being part of the community and creating this. Oh, creating new this community. amazing, amazing opportunity that yeah. I don't think, I can't think of any other. I think maybe occasionally there'd be an off, a one off class, like a, you know, a woman's, but not an yeah, ongoing yeah, one that, yeah. that it's always, it's people can just drop into and they can make it work for how they, you know, you'd have to sign up and it'd be a, a yeah. session the or problem whatever. with that is it doesn't it doesn't stick as much mm -hmm. so that means whatever you, even if you learn great stuff it's hard to make it effective going forward by having it reoccur every week whether we repeat the same things or not it's like you're in a program mm -hmm. so that you're constantly mm -hmm. re, being reintroduced and to me that just all the other things yes but also increases the um, effectiveness of, mm -hmm. uh, in the reality of the situation if something comes up Right, that likelihood that it's just going to kick in, okay, elbow, boom. You know, that's just going to come because you've just trained it so yeah, much. Yeah, and ultimately, like I tell them, it doesn't have to be perfect. We don't mm -hmm. have to be Mike Tyson. You don't have to learn the, <laughs> land the perfect punch. Just show that just you're effective. willing to, to do right. something. Even if it doesn't land, people know, like, oh, that, if it did land, that would that would have been bad. So it's psychological. We want to convince them that we're just not the one. Perfect. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for coming, and we'll see you again next see you week. See next week. Goodbye, community. Local news, politics, business, sports,
Music.